Hello, young ladies and fellows. How are you? Good to see you. So today I have chosen a story which is set in Tundra, Alaska, one of the coldest regions because while the rest of the world is having global warming, I'm sure you're aware of it, and our ecosystem has been disrupted really badly. The entire environment, air, sea is polluting, and our future generations will have a very hard time. And many special uh, animal species, species are becoming extinct. Trees and plants are being removed for commercial or residential developments, you know that, to make newer cities. So that's a very bleak picture, but if we do something about it, I'm sure things will improve. So this story is set in Tumtra, where um, this character, Miax, is lost on the Alaskan Tundra and she's an Eskimo girl. She meets and becomes the companion of a pack of wolves. Interesting. And the names of the wolves are Amarok, Silver, Nails and Kapu. Miax is running from a troubled home to the promised pink room of a house in San Francisco where her pen friend Amy lives. But the wolves and memories of the words of her father, Kapugan, help me actually realize where her real home is, and which is nature. Yes, you got it. All right. Miak sat up, this is an extract from the book. Miak sat up wondering what that was. Creeping halfway out of her back, she peered into the sky to see a great brown bird maneuver its wings and speed west. A skua? She was closer, that meant she was closer to the ocean. Then she thought for the skua is a bird of the coastal waters of the Arctic. So now then she saw an oil drum in the, the signpost of American civilization in the north. How excited she would have been to see this a month ago. Now she was not so sure. She had her needle sled and tent and the world of her ancestors. And she was very reassured and comfortable. She liked the simplicity of this world. It was easy to understand. Out here she understood how she fitted into the scheme of the moon and the stars and the constant rise and fall of life on the earth. Even the snow was part of her. She melted it and drank it. She, then Emerald, the wolf, barked. He was not more than a half a kilometer away. Ow! She called. Nails answered and then the whole pack howled briefly. She jumped, shouted joyously, I'm here, I'm here. You know what? You know everything about me all the time, you dear, dear wolves. Why? Because they were always taking care of her. See, animals are more civilized than us, right? They take the responsibility. All right. Then um, um, she was signaling them to come to her. And then she, uh, the freeze was deepening. Miax lit a fire and put on her pot. A warm stew would taste good and the smoke and flames would make the tundra home. Presently, Emerald barked forcefully and the pack answered. And then, Silver checked in from across the lake. Nails gave a warning snarl and the pups whispered, Woof! Woof! Oh! Oh! We had shaded her eyes. Her wolves were barking from points around a huge circle and she was in the middle. This was strange. They almost always stayed together so this was different suddenly Emerald barked ferociously his voice angry and authoritative silver yelped the nails and kapu they had something at bay she stepped onto this lake and halfway across she saw a dark head rise above the hill and a beast with a head as huge as the moon rose to its hind feet massive paws dangling Grizzly, she gasped and stopped stone still. 
and the huge animal rushed into the eyes. The, uh, the wolves, Emmerog, Nails and Silver leapt at him before the bear could strike. They were actually trying to head it off, trying to prevent it from crossing. The bear snarled and galloped towards Miax. She ran towards her tent. The wind was in her face and she realized that she was downwind of the bear. Her scent, her smell blowing right to him. She darted off in another direction for bears have poor eyesight and cannot track if they cannot smell. Slipping and sliding, she reached the south bank as a grizzly staggered forward, but then he bent down on his knees. And she was wondering why was he not in hibernation and what woke up the wolves. They had been sleeping throughout the day because it was snowing and it was cold. But the pack kept harassing the sleeping beast by barking and snarling. But they had no intention of killing it. So they're not greedy or vicious. They just hunt when they need food and just enough which fills their bellies, unlike human beings who are carried away by the greed for money, material gains. Do you agree with me? They were simply trying to drive it away from her. She realized, so they were trying to save her, though she's not one of them. Slowly, then uh, reluctantly, blindly, the uh, bear staggered before the wolves, occasionally stood up like a giant, but mostly it roared in the agony of sleepiness. Shapping, barking, darting, the wolves drove the grizzly bear far out on the tundra. They made it. Okay, and then they were, they break, broke into a joyous gallop, dashed over the snow and out of sight. Why? They were their duty done. See how beautiful they are? They were running, not to hunt, not to kill, but simply for one. But Miax was trembling. She had not realized the size and ferocity of the bear, who's called Grizzly and Brown Bear and uh, large, large ones like the Grizzly, her wolves had driven away, were huge. Miax wiped a beat of perspiration from her forehead. Had he come upon her tent with one curious sweep of the paw, he would have snuffed out her life while she slept. Okay, I'll be back.